you ready? Yeah, I'm posting on Instagram. What are you posting? My view. Oh, I like that one. Yeah. Black and white. You want me to tag you so Look you can share it? No, you don't have to. I'll tag you. Keep the glory. This is Byron Lazine and Nicole White, and you are tuned in to episode 52 of The Real Word. Word is up. Word up. Maybe it's the lights. That's going to make you sneeze, the lights? Yeah. Wow. We're here. It's an interesting sense to see a light and sneeze <laughs> and smell. I'm also like sick, but I think it's now the light is like making my. All right, well, then we're gonna do. If you're sick, we're gonna do this really fast. No, we're Today's good. main topic is a DM from JD Manning, who's a friend of the show. Mm -hmm. He's chimed in a bunch in the past. We appreciate your support, JD. Let's put his IG handle and and a screenshot of uh, what he sent. And basically, this what there's no link, so. If you're looking for a link on the main topic, there won't be a link out to an article. This is JD's experience. How many people do you think click the links? We're getting, uh, well, we know how many people. There's actually doing? quite a bit. Yeah, people are like wanting yeah. to know more. I would say about 20 people per article. I don't article. know. So I can't decide if it's like, so does that mean we're not I don't doing know if our 20s, job? Maybe not a lot. Are we like pushing them there? They want Listen, to know more? No, no, I think it's <laughs> interesting where it's like, if I'm going to watch this show, Nicole, mm -hmm. Which I'm ho I hope everybody's enjoying mm -hmm, watching it mm -hmm. or listening, however you're doing it. Well, hopefully they haven't had a good the, Thanksgiving. If too. they want to dig deeper on that topic and yeah. kind of get the whole thing, mm -hmm. they have the yeah. opportunity to do that. If they Perfect. don't, they just kind of breeze through. I think it's, it's a little I option there. I think it's there. great. Maybe and everything's getting linked, by the way. Except these, this. Especially on YouTube. If you're on YouTube, that's definitely where the links are living in the description. All right. So this has no link, though. No so link. it's his experience, Scottsdale, Linkless. Arizona, twice in a week time frame. Mm -hmm. He had buyer agents reach out to him where the buyer wanted to lease the property with option to purchase in six months. So he's mm -hmm. got the listing on these on this property mm -hmm. and people want to buy it mm -hmm. after or have an option to buy it. I'm option sorry. They want to have a lease option, mm -hmm. but they want to go out and in those six months lease it on Airbnb. So they're disclosing that up front? Yes. Hmm. Because how else would it? Yeah. Yeah. They are disclosing that up front front so his sellers are like well how do we know he's not just going to you know siphon in some rental money off the six months and then bail on this contract yeah. and not purchase yeah so that i mean there's i hate and i think we were talking about it before i really i don't like lease to purchases i feel like i get calls on properties all the time hey i see that this house has been in the market forever is your seller willing to lease with is an option selling willing to rent yeah yeah just you, like but i but like maybe i'll Shut buy up. it and i'm like first of all like i know you're not gonna buy it right because if you were gonna buy it you'd be attempting to buy it you're just saying that because you feel like that that would be more of an incentive to the seller. And unfortunately, sellers do kind of like fall into that trap of like, oh, cool, right. maybe they will buy. They're not buying. They start to daydream. Very seldom do I ever suggest to a seller accept a lease to purchase or even entertain it. What yeah. is the benefit to you as the owner? There's, You've just given yeah. the leverage yeah. to the tenant. They There's have the no. they have the option. They've got they're on like I would love to have options on on anything that I lease yeah. because if the market changes and mm -hmm. I have an option at a good price, mm -hmm. I'll exercise my option. There's so the only taking the leverage away. Yeah, I think the only time that I would really ever do it is if a buyer all of a sudden became they were in a situation where they all of a sudden kind of had to rent it because they couldn't get financing or something. I big also, non refundable deposits well, is when it so makes that, sense. So that's the big. I mean, at that point, I 100% get an attorney involved. I've never drafted a rent to buy because there's so many like percentages of rent that go. Yeah, toward, you're not going standard board. I mean, form, you no. and, and if I represented the seller, I would make them do a home inspection yeah. too. Like they have to start investing some money on the front end. I think in, order for in, it all to make sense. In JD's case, where he's had this recently right now i think it's very interesting though you know, this could be december 2018 mm -hmm. when you're listening to this mm -hmm. or watching this i mean it could be much later obviously but if it's right now when we're releasing at the very end of november 2018 right. and he just got hit up within the last month you're coming into a six month period where people want to be in scottsdale arizona right. people want to be in these warmer 
uh, climate states mm -hmm. where they can go bail on northeast or northern states mm -hmm. and go down for the winter. So if I'm somebody who's savvy and, and looking at that, mm -hmm. maybe I do want to just grab it for six months and not do the purchase. So to the sellers, you know what they're worrying about. Right. I, I totally get that. So maybe then what the strategy becomes is maybe the seller gets involved in it as well. Right gets the upside on the Airbnb yeah maybe you're required maybe maybe you say sure my seller's willing to do it but like a percentage I mean someone's mm -hmm. gonna have to outfit the property though too I mean who's buying yeah. the furniture for it but I mean in all honesty if you're if I was the seller and I had a house sitting there I would 100% sit down with that person and be like well what's in it for me and I'd be like and I would that's a gr listen that's a great point because I think you could take it another level with that yeah. you could say to the buyer you could say listen you're saying you want the option to purchase and you're you're being up front. You're telling me you're going to do the Airbnb right. thing. And maybe you're just trying to test, see if this is a right. really good Airbnb market. Right. How about this? If you hit these certain numbers in the six months, the purchase is the, their deposit becomes non-refundable. Right. Right. Like you have to now move forward with the purchase because now I know you're not bullshit. You're not just trying to soak up the best six months right. of the rental market. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, in all honesty, though, too, as a seller, I mean, instead, because there, there has to obviously be. I feel like you would need some sort of percentage in it also just because, God forbid. There's more wear and tear. It's so more much frequent more wear. And, and those and people out. don't give two hoots about your house or your stuff yeah. or anything. And then your neighbors are getting pissed off because if, there's like cars coming and going. So there needs to be an upside. So I think there's a way you could play on that. But it's regardless, when, it's very interesting. When we Airbnb in wine country the last couple of years. You, I heard you were a little bit of, I heard you, you caused a, a ruckus. No, we didn't cause a ruckus. You did. That's I a racket. You. I heard we did you not, caused a ruckus. I did not cause a ruckus. I heard you, I heard you really. Well, I do notice though, like if there's a sign, please take your shoes off in an Airbnb rental. I find myself wearing my shoes more often than I ever would. <laughs> okay. I start wearing them as slippers. So, uh, you know. Heard it here first. Folks. I do think there's going to be a level of more wear and tear. If somebody's Airbnb being something for, three to four to five days, there's probably an increase in alcohol intake than their normal life. Well, so I, so. But, but again, I don't know what these homes are. I mean, it's also very interesting though, too, because I would almost, because in my, I, I feel like with rentals though, too, even if it's not an Airbnb. There's a lot of kids, there's a lot of use. Well, you also maybe like you push the price a little bit more if you are looking to get a certain, I don't know. Because again, young kids, if there's a group of them aren't going to be spending, you know, say like, X amount, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like sort of push it beyond where a group of like college kids would come in for the weekend for like yeah, you gotta know your, dollars. You gotta night. understand who, who's gonna be right, renting these places right. out. But All right, let, let's get into the rackets. That was a oh, fun, JD, appreciate, you, JD, appreciate you sending that. If you wanna send in anything, you can certainly DM either one of us or, or email. Or maybe it's happening in other states. Like let us know if it's happening in other Absolutely. states. Absolutely, if you have this experience, please let us know, drop it into the comments. Uh, maybe JD will even find you in the comments and, and respond, that'd be super cool. All right, racket. Number one. Nicole sent me this article. Oh. It's on Realtor Mag. Realtor Mag. It's on Realtor Mag, so we've got it linked up. Are architects to blame for obesity? Hello. That's an actual headline. Can you? Well, no, the headline's a little different. I think I paraphrased, but the headline is report architectural design aids, aids obesity. Yeah. Eights. I mean, holy. I'm going to just be straight up. This is a hell. total racket. Who who wrote this? It's um, I, Daily News. It's from the Daily News. I mean. And then the, the report is from the nonprofit Trust of America's Health. This is so stupid. Tr whoever. I don't know who <laughs> Trust of America's Health is, but I would guess they're getting paid significant amounts of money or supported by food companies that don't want them to really talk about what the problem with obesity is, which is oh. what's in our food. Like, why are they not talking about that? They're talking about architects yes. on real estate. This is stupid. Research finds a link between built environments, all the human-made physical aspects of a community, and both physical activity and obesity, according to the to the report. Uh, they're saying nearly 40% of Americans are obese. Sure, get that. But they're saying 90% of people spend their time indoors. Dude, that has nothing to do with why people are obese. People were not obese, uh, you know, like they are in the last 50 to 100 years, you know, three, four, 500 years ago, they weren't obese because they weren't eating what we eat today. Right. It's very, very simple. Very, like we're putting yes. a lot of shit in our body mm -hmm. over and over and over again, and it's stacking up. It has nothing to do with how often I we are indoors and that there's not a, mm. um, you know, a, a design for physical activity. Most people 
that are 40 percent of the people that are obese, some of them are might have some type of issue, not an issue, but physical, reason, yeah. physical constraint of why yeah. they're obese. Right. But there's certainly a percentage of them that are just choosing to sit indoors and stuff down Fritos and you know that type of well food. i just think it's interesting because now they get like, to now they get to blame the architect not to beat up on fritos but it, doritos or any of those you know processed yeah. foods yeah we're gonna beat up on architects this well that, yeah i think it's i think it's i think i mean i think i think the article itself does have um some good points i just don't think that it's really up to an architect to aid people you. in losing weight. I mean, they were talking about, and I love stairways. I mean, they were talking about like, you know, enhancing stairways, adding color to stairways, adding like- Yeah, more stairs. You know, making more outdoor living space. I get it. I mean, that's just good. That's just good for the people. I just, I think it's super interesting that the article is about the fact that architects are quasi responsible for the fact that people aren't getting up and moving in their homes because they weren't designed properly. New York City, for example, has adopted active design guidelines urging mm. the need for prominent placement of stairs yeah. to your point, mm -hmm. ramps, blah, mm -hmm. blah, yeah. blah. Mm -hmm. I get it. I think, it's, I think it's, it's a great idea, but holy hell. I mean. This is a total racket. Total it's, racket. It's, it's so total racket. stupid. If you care about obesity and if, if the trust of America's health uh, nonprofit, <clears throat> I don't know, if, if that nonprofit really cares – about obesity then yeah. attack the food that we're eating you don't even have to exercise and you certainly can stay inside a hundred percent of your time mm -hmm. if you just were to like to eat very strict diets mm -hmm. very strict cut everything out far less people would be obese right stupid totally yeah that was stupid. a fun one though that was a fun one all right <clears throat> racket number two baby boomer bathroom trend there are certain types of bathrooms mm -hmm. that baby boomers are looking for. I feel like my nose is running. For. Do you see it running? It's like running. I don't see it running. Okay. No. Good. Thanks, Does anybody, thanks Sam. Maybe, if, you see it, <laughs> if you see Nicole's <laughs> nose running, leave us a comment <laughs> for sure. Um, well, you're just staring at me. I feel like you're like. I was trying to see now <laughs> if I can see this infamous run. Anyway, All so right. baby boomers, their bathroom trends. The latest bathroom trend is accessibility. Yep for baby boomers when they're looking at a bathroom layout accessibility. We know for sure baby boomers are overwhelmingly looking for more one level living yep. experiences. I have to be honest though, I've been in a lot of new developments and I mean you have too and yep. we work for them whether yep. they're 55 and over or not. I feel like the biggest trend now though is having if not a master on the first floor, a lot of them are like ranch like ranch style designs where I think that regardless of being a baby boomer or not, I get it for the baby boomers cuz they need to have accessibility into a shower, they're, they're not stepping. Term. I get it. But I think a lot of people that are building homes or moving into homes are looking for a purchase that's like long term right like 30 years 40 years 50 years i actually really like it here my friends are mm -hmm. here my kids are going to be mm -hmm. raised here i, I want to build something that when i turn 60 i don't have to then I move see now you're wiping your nose what is it is i had it an like? itch mine's not running i had an itch god okay um so i think regardless of being a baby boomer or not i think that it's a huge trend like across the board i agree yeah for, yeah one level of living is super super rad it's also very expensive to build people don't realize that one level you know if you're just going to build like a 2,000 square foot house one level ranch yeah. as opposed to a 2,000 square foot colonial right, for example their foundation size yeah and all, it's, it's going to sure. be more expensive yeah. to build um this is a, a house latest bathroom trends report baby boomers are ditching the tub mm -hmm. and investing in accessible bathroom features such as a more open bathroom layout i cannot tell you and i'm certain that most agents have the same experience right now. You're going into a house that is the master bathroom. Maybe the house is 25 years old. So let's mm -hmm. say 90s, right? Mm -hmm. And the master bathroom is huge. Mm -hmm. And there's like 25% of it is taken up by this huge tub. whirlpool spa-like tub. Mm -hmm. and, and everybody, it's probably like spitting out black mold anyway. Like you're not even oh using God, it anymore. Oh God, they're so gross. gross. Yeah. And every single homeowner's like, I have this amazing spa-like jacuzzi tub. Like, they're really pumping it up. You let them go through their whole spiel about their master bathroom tub, and you're mm -hmm. looking at it. It's, it hasn't been used right. in five years yeah. at best. Right. You're looking at it. Yeah. And then you say to them, "Hey, how often do you use do you use it? Oh no, we never use it. We never yeah. use it. But but people love these. And you're yeah. like, no, 
They don't love them. No. No buyer is asking us about master bedroom tubs, bathroom tubs anymore. These yeah. big jacuzzi tubs, people want them ripped out yeah. and have a bigger shower. Nobody or, has time for for bathing. Well, it's bathing. called bathing. It's called bathing, but nobody is bathing anymore. No I'm telling you no that one, right and now. And no one's ever bathed before. <laughs> yeah, <I'm certainly> so <laughs> <they have>. <laughs> <laughs> I do think, though, that in, in the same breath, if we're even if we're not talking about masters, there are plenty of baby boomers that do come through homes, and they do want even not a baby boomer. I think there needs to at least be a bath somewhere in the home, though. Maybe the guests. If people are in that time frame of where they have grandkids or children yeah, well, of their and own, most do. that's Come where on. people are. Even at 66 high, people want to be able to bathe their, maybe they're bathing their them. Their dogs. Their dogs, they're yes. They're bathing their dogs a lot. So, I, again, yes. I, I agree. There's There are use for the bathtubs, but there not needs to necessarily to, to take house. up 25% of your master no, bath no, anymore. No, no, no. And with these big jacuzzis that always, the ones from like the 90s and stuff are always breaking. Yeah, well, but that, and they're also like they're shooting water through them. Like the new ones are better because at least it's air. So you're yep. not, like your lines aren't getting gross. I don't mind the soaking ones. The soaking ones, you know, like there's some people foot, that really them. like. Oh, some people will will still bathe. draw a bath. Oh, for sure. Multiple times a day. I have some you friends know? that do it multiple times a day. Drawing a bath multiple, multiple times? Multiple times a day. Mm-hmm. How do you have time to draw a bath multiple mm-hmm. times? I can't even get through the drawing of the bath. Well, I mean, it's sort of, you know, yeah. Well, there's like a TV screen. You know, you could probably work. I oh. mean, would you work in a bath? I would, yeah. Yeah, see? So you just, you haven't been, you haven't been introduced to the correct type of bath. Yeah. Maybe that's it. I think I'm more like... If I want to, um, what what are people bathing for? Is it reducing inflammation? <laughs> they or just, it's pro- that cryotherapy is pretty cool, it, but it only takes three minutes. They're probably you know, maybe they're running from their children. The bath, you know? <laughs> taking a bath. Yeah, doors locked. <laughs> Half a bottle of wine later. <laughs> I would totally do that if I could actually fit in my bath. All right, racket number three. Yes. So is that a racket? I think it's a total. The, uh, I think I think the article. Well, I think it's just totally obvious. I yeah. mean, I think it's just a trend. All right. Because I would I would love a st- like I don't want to step either, and I'm a healthy individual. Yeah. I'd rather just walk. You in. know, the show's actually getting old now because now old. we're doing not old, but like we're maybe we're getting old. The, we're getting updates on previous oh. topics, right? We we're talking about maybe doing the Brady Bunch up, uh, update. Maybe we can do Ooh, that next yes, week. We'll that do that was next the plan. week. We had many um, updates, but this update was for the homie now that the election's homie over for senate so company agrees this homie company which we linked up in a previous episode you can maybe put that in the description us the last uh, episode where we talked about homie for senate um this is a discount brokerage yes homie.com and the company has agreed to never run the fake political campaign again well in all honesty though they can't come on you did word? it it's like foe. fox no it's foe oh it's foe <laughs> huh I'm the worst <laughs> reader of all time. Like I would have been literally if I had read that headline. It's okay. When I was a kid, there was a, there was a there was a book I read, and um, his name Fox was Sean. His name was Sean S E A N. Yeah. And I and I was re- when I was reading, I was reading it as C N. Right. C N. So when, when it was like a, it was like a, it was like a lunch. How dumb li- are we? I know, it was like a, it was like a li- it was like a real like a lunch like a like a you would read a book and then like, you meet like during lunch talk about the book and everybody kept talking about this character Sean and I was like, hmm. did I, I get the I, did I get the, I the book? Wrong book? I take a wrong book out of the library. Yeah. I was like, wait, I thought that there was like, who's, but where's CN? So Why here's, is what's it, CN? here's what's interesting about yeah. this update. So obviously that was an aggressive marketing campaign. Mm-hmm. Everybody was like, saw these signs. Who's homie? Can, should yeah. I vote for them? Mm-hmm. Right. So you're confusing people. And, yeah. and basically they agreed not to do this because there was some voter confusion apparently. And, right. And even the, uh, the Arizona attorney general, got involved. Um, he got involved mm-hmm. and, and basically made sure that they stopped. And part of the agreement, from Homey was that they would not use any of the data collected through its Homey for Senate website mm-hmm. where visitors were asked to provide their personal information, including phones and email addresses. So they just they said, we're what? not going to use any of this. What we will use, we have to deliver some T-shirts, Homey for Senate T-shirts that they promised for people. Stop. So they're like, we have to use that information uh, to get out the, the T-shirts, but we'll delete everything else. Interesting. So that, that's super interesting. But I also feel they like... basically. The attorney general said they broke the law, and this is basically an agreement to not huh. get in trouble. Well, and I feel like I will. First of all, I don't. I wouldn't do the same thing again the following year. Like you did it, you 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 yeah, killed yeah. it. You, got your, you did you your got thing. What you wanted out of yeah, it. I mean, 
even if you have to delete all this stuff, like people know who homie is now. I mean, I got to still give him a high five. No, you, you, got, mean, you got what you, you wanted out of it. You got yeah. the word out that homie.com exists in how, Arizona, how, which how is we what get you a, wanted. We should, get, we should get a shirt. We should. It's going to be a collector's item in like 20 yeah, years. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. You know, when this show is really, really, really popular in like 20 years. Homie for Senate shirt. We'll have the collector's item. Of yeah. Um, so I, I just thought it was interesting. They basically. Yeah. I mean, obviously. They basically, without admitting any wrongdoing, admitted that they broke the law and they're going to stop. So. But I wonder if they knew. You think they knew? I think they knew that that was super in the gray. Super in and the gray. And sometimes you got to go for it and ask for permission later. It worked out for them because they're not getting in trouble. Yeah. And they, they got. forgiveness. Ask for forgiveness, forgiveness uh, later. What did I say? You said ask for permission later. Ask for permission. Yeah. No. It's, it's easier to. Beg ask for the forgiveness. forgiveness. Beg for forgiveness. Yeah. Then permission. ask for permission. Yeah. Just ask break the rules. See what happens. That's wow. what we're promoting here. Wow. On the <laughs> 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 All right, guys. Really appreciate it. Good nice. show. Good show. Yeah, it was a good like one. It? Short and sweet. Short Look and sweet. It. Any comments? You want to send us any DMs like JD did? from Arizona. Yeah, Arizona was all over this, this All episode. over, yeah. It's just the battlegrounds for real It's estate. interesting. It's super. Yeah. We were there. I feel like we need yeah. to go back. Yeah, we need to go back. It's, it is where Ooh, things wait, happen. Where, what was that place called? The we were princess. in Scottsdale. The princess. Remember we went to uh, the princess we of the to, spa? Yeah, nobody wants to hear about that. All no. right. Um, mm -hmm. Really appreciate you guys. Thank please, you. please send us any topics you'd like to talk about, and uh, we'll see you next time. Keep it real.